We're back. I am finally getting to start the Georgiana Terry project. Probably mid 80s. Probably mid 80s Terry about last summer. Um, and this one's really cool. You know, it's a little rusty and scruffy. There's lots of paint chips and damage and rust spots everywhere. It's beater, but sometimes beater bikes are super fun. Um, it's got Tongay two butted tubes, it says, but I think this took a 27.2 seat post. So that sticker might be a lie. It might be Tongay one, or maybe they had some Tongay two that fit 27.2. Um, this is the hottest part about the bike. It says custom quality, handmade in New York. And that makes this a Serata built Terry. So Terry, I don't know if she ever actually built any frames herself or just did some design work or, you know, maybe she's just a company and had other people do design work and build frames for her, but you can hear the dirt. It's probably old flux. It's been in here for 500 years. Um, but this is built by Serata for Terry. So it's straight up a Serata race bike. A Tongay two tubes instead of uh, whatever Strata was using at the time. They might have been using Tongay. They're probably using True Temper. Um, means the rear dropouts have eyelets. It's got rack mounts, and it's got uh, I, what I believe is just a straight up Tongay fork. But it's a nice light crown. It's got eyelets. Got my scale out because I want to see something cool, Dad. Five pounds, 12 ounces. So this is a sub six pound frame and fork. And uh, by my estimations, compared to almost every other road bike ever made, especially production bikes, sub six pounds is light. I'm sure I built lighter bikes out of 7.4 super light tubes and rando stuff, but, um, but yeah, sub six pounds is light, light, light. I'm trying to remember, it's been under my bed for like a year since I got it. Of course. I'm trying to remember the sizing. I feel this bike might be a little small for me, but like, you know. Oh, yuckers. Like a 55. I really like a bike that's too big, like a 58. Ooh, with a 53 top tube. Barf. Bar, so I'm probably gonna use a longer stem and maybe a more like just straight riser bar instead of a cruiser bar. Otherwise, this thing is always gonna feel way too small. Worst case, I build it up and try and sell it. I'll probably ride it a little bit, try and sell it. Worst case, if it's too small, no one cares, I will take the parts off and put it onto a different frame someday. Because that is easy peasy. I feel like I used my tire checker gauge and whatnot and this thing swore up and down, it would fit, that's way too small, swore up and down, it would fit a 700 by 38. But now I'm looking at this thing, there's no dimples inside or out, which will make it a nice stiff frame. But now I'm a little worried. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like it'll fit a 738. This might need some sneerious surgery. Dummy axle, that's what I'm looking for. And it's 126 space, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Come on, man, let me in. Okay, tire checker, 650B, 38. Dummy axle, fits nice up here. Dude, it fits. Got some dimpling, this would fit 42s. I got... I got dang, you know, between an eighth and a quarter, somewhere a little bit more than that, but I got enough room, in theory, according to this, yep, according to this Han Russman tire checker, I think I do more advertising for him than uh, he's ever done for himself. Um, so I've been slowly collecting a bunch of Dura Ace parts for this bike all year, bought a couple other parts bikes, bought a few random parts. One of the parts I got was this Dura-Ace 8-speed rear hub, a little scruffy. I got 8-speed Dura-Ace cranks, got all the stuff. I pulled it out and showed it off before. Pulled it out and showed it off again. But I just had this custom wheel set built by Stoic Wheels. Um, and so this is the Velocity Atlas Touring Rim 650B. It's high polished. It's kind of got classic-y lines. 
Got them on super clearance because they were from the scratch and dent sale like five years ago. We ordered a whole bunch of them and sitting around and slowly building. <laughs> Having wheels built. Nice Supreme, super light double butted spokes. This is the eight speed version of the Durace hub, so it'll fit a eight, nine, ten speed cassette. This is gonna look good. In theory, it's gonna fit. I sort of squeezed it in. Um, squeezed right in. I'll probably re realign this frame to 130 in a second. But in theory, it'll fit a 38, no fenders. Um, but, and some big wide Tetro long reach brakes. Real sexy, in theory. And I got the 8 speed Durace stuff, about as scruffy as this frame. So it's going to look good. First thing you want to build after you go through and inspect the whole frame and make sure there's no cracks or dents or wreck damage or anything real obvious. Inspect it, I clean it. Probably did that more or less on this <laughs> a year ago before I stepped out of my bed. Next thing I like to do is get the wheels ready. I don't think I don't think I ever overhauled this back hub, so I should probably do that. But I don't wanna. I don't wanna build it, so I'll do it like later. It's probably fine. Yeah, it's a little like 126. So I need to refresh this frame. This is good tubes and there's no dimples. This might be hard to respace. It might be. I'm gonna try and do it by hand real quick, that doesn't work. I mean go over to a frame builder's house uh, lately. Throw on the old alignment table and respace it. Then I'm gonna do rim tape and tubes. First we're gonna do is check and make sure this thing is straight. The old park frame alignment gauge. This side touches perfectly. See if the other side is the same. Head tube, seat tube, drop out. No. This side's in a, or this side's got a couple millimeters showing. A gap. So in theory, I might be able to just push this side out a couple millimeters and we'll get 130. Oh. <laughs> See if that did anything. 126, 70, 128, so we'll come out a couple of millimeters. Maybe one more push and we'll be there. Just being a little bit reserved because if you saw the last video I did the uh, the little Nishiki Mixty, I barely gave it a push and that thing is, you know, not real chromo tubes and just went from 126 to 140, like so easy. Yes, I like to do it by hand. I like to try and feel her out. I don't feel like it did anything. And it didn't. Come on, you man. 126, 7, 8. I'm still at 128. I'm doing nothing. Nothing, bro. Nothing. Definitely felt the move. I don't know if it's sprung back or not. Oh, we're exactly at 130 now. It yeah, probably a move or set a little bit. Those wheels go in real nice and easy. Grab the old vintage VAR drop out alignment gauge. Set and respray to 130. Bolt them on and <laughs> this dropout's like Meep. way too much. No bueno. No good. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then it goes bleh. But metal tends to like to spring back where it was. So shouldn't be too big a deal. Nothing's perfect, perfect, but you also don't want to bend things back and forth 500 times. Like think about the pop tab on your soda pop can. What happens when you bend it back and forth ten times? So that is pretty good, pretty close. But I thought I'd have to dimple it and show you guys a video on how to dimple stays on a bike that's already built. It sucks. It's, I don't recommend it. Um, let's talk about wheels and tires. So I got this whole thing of Zafal um, super wide rim tape that last swapped me. It was like, way too cheap. 
because no one cares. No one cares about things like rim tape until it's too late and they need it desperately. So why not stock up? I, don't, I think I might have paid like 10 bucks for this or something. These things at the store or what now? There are four when I saw it. There's six a piece now. So this is the widest size, 22 mils. And old style rim tape, everyone only cares about tubeless and only care about narrow rim tape for old rims. But this should be about perfect for uh, these nice wide Velocity 650B Atlas rims. Rim tape them. I'm going to lecture you about tube sizes. <laughs> You're not going to like it. Everyone's going to think I'm wrong. And I might be. I don't think so. Wow, this is really sticky tape. When I buy tape new new, like for the shop, I really strongly prefer... Um, God, I can't remember the name of it now. New Bombs. So I really prefer New Bombs. I like their handlebar cotton tape, the best of any cotton cloth tape. And I like the rim tape. It is really sticky. It doesn't fall off. You can pull it off and put it back on. Um, I don't think I've ever tried this as a fall brand. I, was, I always used to use Velox. It used to be what everyone considered the best uh, tape before New Bombs existed. But this Velox is not very sticky. It does kind of fall off a little bit. Where most things are not sticky at all and fall off really easy and drive you nuts. This stuff is really sticky and it's leaving sticky residue on itself where it's going to be touching the tube too. So this could be a whole issue. This is really hard. Usually rim tape comes off dang easy and barely sticks. But you know... I got it for a song, man. A song. Sometimes there's something called the high cost of low prices, where you get things for free or for cheap uh, because they're a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> and people aren't willing to pay to deal with them anymore. And if you're going to be a broke-ass cheapskate like me, that works great. When I owned the shop and I was making custom bikes, I was not a broke-ass cheapskate. It was other people's money and my labor. So I wanted all the good stuff. I only stocked things I liked that didn't suck. But we're going to talk tubes, so I don't have anything I like. I have some brand new tubes that I got, you know, a discount, some stuff on sale. These ones are 27.5. They are, so 650B, which is the size I'm using, are 584 millimeters. Same thing. All three of them are the same way of saying the same thing. These are 1.5 to 1.95, or 650B by 38 to 50. I hate that. That's way too big of a range. These are going to suck. Especially since I'm using 38s, the small side of the range. These are not going to work. They're going to be too fat. They're going to be annoying. It's going to be really easy to pinch or tear them. I hate it. I like getting stuff that's right spec on size or, you know, has a very small range. You're right in the middle or on the smaller side of it. Uh, the tubes on the smaller side, like these are 650B, 38 to 42 would be all about it. Or 35 to 42 would be like, yeah, these are too big. This is mountain bike nonsense. I have these. These are 26 by 1.5 to 1.95. These are going to be too small. So the ISO for 26 is 559 millimeters versus 584, so they're a little bit too small. Um, the Presta valves, they're the short valve, which these rims take. 1.5 is basically the size I want to 1.95, um, which is basically what those say they are. But I bet you anything, these are smaller. They might even be the same tube. When you use a tube that's too big, they're fat, they're heavy, they're annoying. If you use a tube that's too small, they can sometimes be overstretched while you're using them, and um, you just have to put air in them a little more often. So I can see these tubes are like a quarter inch wider, these 27.5s. They are too big, bro. I'm definitely going to use these 26s, and the worst case, I have to pump them up every two weeks instead of every four weeks. I basically, if I let, I'm not riding my bike every day, I'll, I usually end up pumping my tubes up every time I take it for a ride, if I'm only going like once a week or something. So like, whatever, man. And they feel quite a bit lighter. Hmm, I dislike that strongly. Hey, man. These don't have any threads. A lot of people don't like to use a little thread on doodadders. I really do like them. Um, because these can rattle in the rim sometimes. If you go to pump them up, these will push all the way up and you can't get a crappy pump on there. Ah. Ah. 
They're lighter this way. I should probably just use them. But when Brian built the wheels, he had an extra set of these red little um, thread-on valve jammers. These ones are have wrench flats on the side and are made for a little O-ring, so I think they're really tubeless. But they're red, and I got red nipples, and I got red everything. Ah! So after all of that, might we try and use these tubes that are probably too big and gonna drive me insane? Standard low bead. Oh, well, that's something. They're threaded, they're a little longer. Oh, they got the little green stripe on there, a little green paint. I like that, I do not know why. I thought I had some red alloy valve caps. I only have one. I think I ordered a bunch that came with like a pair of every color except for red. I think I meant to reorder it, never did. We're gonna try these guys with my horrible leaky pump. I got a good one upstairs. I have a few good ones in my friend's storage. Oh, it's kind of working. All right, but just enough air into it to make it hold its shape. Tires. I am basically doing this whole build around these tires. These were put up on Facebook Marketplace for $40. It turns out it was my friend Tom from Tomcat Bikes who was selling them. He bought them for a customer to do tubeless on some bike. They're 27 1.5. It's probably, I don't know, too small for his ugly mountain bike modern tubeless rims. They couldn't get them to set up. They couldn't get them to hold. Also, tubeless is stupid and just doesn't work. And a lot of guys swear it does. And I think if you really know what you're doing, if you're a mountain bike mechanic, you specialize in tubeless, you know what will work, what won't work, and what sealants work, and what tape's good. You can make it work. But for the average guy who doesn't know anything, they're just buying like garbage sealant and garbage tape and mix matching things and trying to make stuff that won't work work. I think it's all problems. I had so many customers come into my shop roll their bike in with just a little bead of tubeless sealant spraying out the side on the, the retail wall or they park their bike and the tire would go flat, leave goo on the floor. No tubeless for me, man. I am against it. I'm sure a whole bunch of people feel exactly the opposite and are in love with it. I'm sure half of them are in love with it because they have good experiences, half of them are in love with it because it's a cult and they just believe it because they believe it and not because it's true. Um, I'm going to look and see if this has a little arrow on it or whatever. The tread has no arrow. The logos have no arrow except for one side has the size on it and one side just says Pan Racer Pacenti. Sente was the first guy who was making really lightweight silver um, rims and the first guy to make these really lightweight tires by Pan Racer. These things are actually too light. The Compass ones are better. The Sente ones are great. They're so light they burn up. I, I've had several friends, you know, Rando rides do uh, 1200Ks. It's like the long Rando ride. Paris Press Paris and stuff. They said you can't get a whole 1200K out of the back. You can do it in the front, but the back will be totally bald and burn through in like a 1000K. Uh, so people just carry extra spares and their whole fronts and do weird stuff. But you get those Compass ultralight tires, they change the rubber formulation a little bit. And you can definitely finish more than one ride, and probably a couple. Okay, so we've got a dilemma. This side that says Pan Racer Presente, this side says Perimoto 27.5. I think I like the Perimoto side better. I don't know why. I'm gonna do it. Line the middle of the logo up with the valve stem like you do, or you, like you should. You want to look pro and not look amateur as heck. See so guys with amateur ass stuff on their bikes all the time, telling people how they're really good bike mechanics, and volunteering to work on people's bikes, and you're like, yeah, maybe, but your bike's like real goofy. <laughs> I'm glad you're learning, but like, you know, take a beat, like have some reality. Tubi. I used to have a friend, and she was pretty good working on bikes, and like, she was real hot, young and skinny and, you know, manic pixie dream girl or whatever, and uh, dudes were always offering to work on her bike, and she kind of just started taking them up, she get a flat, and he's like, I can fix it, she's like, oh cool, can you, yeah, show me. Just because I'm like, why are you doing that? She's like, because these dudes want to be douches and I don't want to fix a flat and my hands all dirty, so. You know, let them try and woo me with bike So, you know, teach their own. I really do like light tires. I really do like Pan Racer and all the nicer tires Pan Racer makes for other brands like Compass and stuff. I like light, nice tires. I like gum walls. You can't pay me to rock 
a super heavy, stiff, flat-proof tire. They're just not worth it. I find that I almost never get flats. These ultralight tires are so supple, they roll over sharp things and deform around them and pop right out. Or really hard tires act like a hammer. It's hammer into hard things and force them in. So I end up getting just as many flats on really stiff, horrible tires. Even marathons, which people swear by, their, their tread is so thick that uh, it's easy to get a big iceberg of glass stuck in there and just roll around on it like 70, 80 times. It's hitting that iceberg every time you roll around and eventually it pokes through. You might get a lot less flats, but they ride like hard rubber bouncy balls and they just feel like they're trying to repel you from the cement instead of gripping it. It's making me feel so unstable that I ride so slow and so safe and take all the fun out of riding my bike. You know, I feel like you got a loose bottom bracket or your pedal's about to fall off or something. You just don't feel safe and secure and fun. All right, I got this up. I got these in. I'm going all the way around both sides, pinching it, making sure the tube's not pinched between the rim anywhere. Making the valve up and down, make sure it's not pinched there. Pump these dudes up. It says max 60. I'm probably going to put them there to make sure they seat. Sometimes they're really tight tires like this stuff, like tubeless and just tight tires. I'll go around and spray a little bit of soap all the way around to really make sure they seat. I'll give it a shot first, out of laziness. If I was really lazy, I'd go upstairs and get my good pump. This one has leaked so much air. All right, up to 60. I think I heard it make some noises. I'm gonna go around and check. There's this little line in the casing of the tire. I'm gonna go around and check that it's visible all the way around. See, like right here, it's not. It's almost visible, but not quite. Oh, that actually made it slip. Sometimes you can just lower the pressure a whole bunch and then roll it up. Sometimes you gotta take it all the way down, put soap in there. All the way around nice and even. You don't wanna see it pop up two or three millimeters, you wanna see it hidden underneath the rim. So I'll make your tire roll like an egg. Nice. Nice. I always go a little too high the first time to make sure the tire's seat. Come on, man, throw it on. No? Are these tubeless ones different than, than, than regular ones? Maybe. Maybe something wrong with this one. Oh, that's sad. I'll have to order some, uh, some normal red ones. Apparently they're different. Why? I don't know. Make sure you don't use the wrong ones on your tubeless setups, I guess. Boo! Yeah! Perimoto. Stick this back here on the ground. That is a. <laughs> it's probably about the same. It just looks scary because I don't have this thing clamped down. It's moving. But it is very tight in there. But I think it'll be fine as long as I don't break a spoke or flex this frame too much. Got more clearance than I thought I'd have up here. There really is almost enough to get a fender in there. There really is. God, there really is. Could drill and tap the bottom of that bridge. Get a fender there, perfect. Down here, it's be a, a real wing nutty thing because these bridges don't match at all. The race bikes did not care. This one matters the brake, that doesn't matter at all. It's a stiffener. But you know, I always braze and a new one in or just use a giant spacer and a weird P clamp around it. That's the thing guys do too. I need to find a set of quick release skewers for temporary while I do the build, and I'm going to put locking skewers in. It's actually ready to start riding. I got one set of the VO ones left. All right, got the front wheel put together too. Also no problems. This one had a lot more tubeless goo and stick them. This is probably the one that's having the problems. Um, this is a Kaize FS Dynacoil Dynamo Hub. Um, this is a brand that Soma's carrying. At first we all thought they were a cheap ripoff of the SPs, which are kind of ripoff of Shimano's and the Suns, um, but I think that they made these fields serviceable now. So you can pull the axles out and press in new sealed cartridge bearings. You couldn't do that before. You had to send it back to the factory, they pull the whole thing apart to redo the bearings, put them back together, mail them back to you. It'd be months, it'd be expensive, it'd be more in shipping uh, than you really pay for the hub, which is crazy. So these ones are supposed to be field serviceable, they're supposed to be better, they had it in stock and silver. It's a little uglier, but you know, Cheaper than the sun. The quick release hole was tight. I just fought and had to get like three different quick I had to get a really cheap, crappy quick release out to actually fit through that hole. It is just, there's one little tight spot in there <laughs> in the middle. 
I can't see it and it wasn't marring up the skewers, so I don't know what's going on. First quick list can get through it all, the second one can get through, but it was too tight to spin on. And this third cheap one, no problems. <laughs> Whew! This boy is tight in here. Clearance is four or five millimeters on each side. I mean, it's as tight as tight we want to go. This is the um, the plug for the dynamo zip tie on here, so I don't lose it. <sighs> yeah, no broken spokes. No broken spokes. <laughs> I could probably get the 650B um, uh, PDW fenders in there without having to trim much or any. Nice old rear, real Shimano skewer, probably like nine speed era. It might be eight speed era. Back when stuff was good and light and silver and pretty and high quality. Unlike modern stuff, which is more expensive, lower quality, all ugly. Baby. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, let's take a look at some of the parts I got for this again. Here's a little cooler box full of the parts for this bike that um, I got. So I'm thinking about attaching this thing to a vintage 70s style wrap around the handlebar hanging out little front uh, bag support. <laughs> we will ride around this little cooler as a rando bag. I think that'd be hilarious. But I also have a fake Louis Vuitton purse that I think would be hilarious mounted on a little front handlebar bag rack of some sort instead of a regular handlebar bag. Be blingy blingy for my kind of blingy bike. So here's some stuff I got. I got this eight speed mint condition uh, Dura Ace rear derailleur. I put these big 11 tooth pulleys in so I couldn't find anything smaller. This is stock that takes a 10. I don't know if the chain's gonna wrap. The Bell Orange just has their red anodized 10 teeth back in stock finally. I have to do a video order. I just feel poor so I keep not doing it. I wanna get some other 650B rims for, for the 60 Allegro and I wanna get some locking skewers, some double sided rack bolts, you know, like. I want some stuff from them. I've also got this little rip-off wolf tooth road link in anodized red. I got an old specialized anodized red water bottle cage. I don't know, I don't know if I care. I got these, you know, cheapy Chinese uh, grips with red anodized locks and red anodized plugs. So yeah, this bike is getting cheese-tastic. Durace headset, the crown race is a little bit beat up on. I might see if I can straighten it, just the outer lip, probably doesn't matter. And I might put on a block of wood and whack it. Um, this is the quick release and connector for the other set of wheels. <laughs> I got this cheap Chinese um, silver dynamo light, came with this tail light, which I, in the past I've taken little pieces of stainless rack stays and bent into little L's. So I just bolt this on up here. So I might do that as big and ugly. <sighs> might be cooler to bolt on down here or something. Run the wire down the rear derailleur cable and then up. The um, frame builder supply and Bell Orange is selling for them. We can get them directly from frame builder supply. Make some little racky bracket things for the the different brand of Supernova Light, which is what modern roadie guys like. It's sort of old pretty stuff. Maybe we'll use that or make one make one from scratch again on a little rack bracket. I've also got this uh, Seculite Plus. Um, this is the best rear light. It's made for a fender. It's all half round. So you put it way down on a fender. A lot of frame builders you machine their own lights to mount on the fender. We just break these open and steal the circuit board and light out of them. Um, so that's an option. Wires. I got a generic uh, like micro shift thummy mount and got this eight speed thummy Dura Ace on it and working for now. It's a little, the guts are a little bit weird. I need to do some, some weird stuff. But I'm not gonna have my scruffy Dura Ace eight speed thumb thummy. I'm gonna do this as a one by. Here's the stem I got. Oh good, the stem's a little bit longer. It's for 26.0 though, but maybe I can make a flat bar work without slipping too bad, but it's old 8-speed era Durace, no bolt, the bolt's hidden on the inside stem, 110. That'd be good for this bike, this bike is so little. 
even like maxed out, this is gonna be low. But I'm gonna do like a, a risery bar, like fixie style. I got a couple different Darius C posts, a real scruffy 27.2, a pretty clean 27.2. I don't actually remember what this frame size is. I think it's 27.2. I've also got a slightly older one in 26.8. I bet it's not 26.8. These are the kind of scruffy cranks. I put the chainring on the outside, but I think with that short cage and the wolf tooth, we were trying it on the RB2 for my roommate, and her chain was falling off. So what I'm gonna do is move this weird, this is like a weird Temu, you know, Alibaba, cheap internet-y chain ring. Uh, it looks like a narrow wide, but I don't think it is. Um, I'll probably move it to the inside and then put like a black bash guard on the outside and then use red chain ring bolts instead of these silver alloy ones. None of these reds even match. <laughs> the rest of this stuff is for other, other builds I got in the works, because I have way too many builds in the works, because I am totally deranged. And I knew that I'd probably have to use these Tektro long reach brakes 559s, I also have some 556s. I think I have Two sets of black and two sets of silver, so I don't know, I just start hoarding them. Got some nutted ones, some recessy nut ones. I think these will work. Let's just hold one up and see, you know? This is like the brake everyone uses for the 650V stuff, and it looks like it'll work fine. Kind of right in the middle of the pad. Lose some clearance if I ever want to do fenders, but Tote's cool. I don't know. If I do a black bash guard, maybe I'll use these black brakes, but probably not. I'm not a big fan of black stuff, usually. I think we'll go silvers. And I got new, I got some nice lightweight, like machined out pad holders, and I got new pads and all that junk in my brake bin somewhere. So there's not really a lot of good options for ultralight eight speed cassettes, um, so I didn't even worry about it. This thing's actually pretty light. I got this off of like, like Alibaba or one of those Temu or something, one of those cheapo websites. I got it because it's 8 speed. It's pretty big. It's the biggest thing to find 8 speed without being totally ridiculous. It's only a 32, so it's not that big. I'm not going to be able to go up hills in this bike <laughs> that well. It says Zitto on it, but it has a red anodized lock ring. So I really got it for that, even though you'll really be able to see it. So that is most of my parts. I know I got some red alloy bolts. I'm going to find some red anodized steel stainless ones too. Maybe that's a thing. This thing's been like a year in the making, man. I guess we got to play with it. I've also considered not using any of these parts on this frame. If this frame doesn't fit or whatever, I might put all of this weird 8-speed Durif stuff on my 60 Allegro. I know that's crazy and cheesy. I kind of just want to keep it all really old wing nutty French stuff that I'm going to break. <laughs> Won't be very functional, but we'll see. That is a crusty, crusty, dirty tube. Oh, it is so crust. It is so dirt. I know I have a, a little flex hone tool around here somewhere for that. I should probably clean it out before I start scruffing up these seat posts. This one's real scruffy anyways. Oh, well, it acts like it wants to fit, but it does not. Maybe this one came. No, I don't remember what came on the bike. This is the 26.8. It is cray cray loose. It's probably 27.0, which would drive me insane. Um, so my RB2 is from this year. I think it uses real Tongue 2 2 I'm going to flex on that out. I'm going to try some C posts. We're going to hope it's not 27.0. <laughs> like the only size I don't have a Durace post in. But I can always use something else for temporary. Let's do that. I got some bars. I've probably collected a dozen bars thinking about this project. I've just been playing with them all. This is probably the first one I got. It's someone I've never heard of. Q-R-A-N-C, Quan Rack, S-R, Q-S-R bar. It's definitely mountain bike bar. It's definitely Pretty good looking, it's alloy, it's pretty wide. Just thinking this might look pretty good with that Dura stem, kind of that that 
silver anodized alloy look. Also got this ridiculous bar, which I probably like better being more of a high rise. It's not quite as wide and it's a little narrow here, which I think might be a problem with doing a little front bag or basket. It's pretty, pretty dope though. It's more BMXy. These small wheels. This bike's gonna kind of feel like a BMX cruiser a little bit. So maybe. I've also got this cheesy thing, which is wide, high rise, or mid rise, I guess, pretty close. And it's 70 wide. So it is like at least half inch, three quarters of an inch wider on, on both sides. How's the fancy bar? It's barely any wider than this fancy bar. It does have way more of a cheesy bar clamp. I'm a little worried about that because I'm heavy and I'm using a shim. Because that stem is 26 So I'm kind of thinking this bar, because it's kind of the fanciest and uh, it's got no mangling, so maybe it'll fit a little tighter. I'm gonna sand, I'm gonna sand the shims a little cross hatch. It won't make them fit looser, but it'll give them more teeth to rip on. This old bar has just little subtle lines that might give it enough to to grip and not slip. I mean, I don't know, I could be crazy. This thing is machined to F. Maybe it'll be the most grippy. But I got, I got me some sick options, bro. <laughs> I kind of like this one the best with the super high rise. And it's got the pretty nice silver anno finished instead of being too bright. Ooh, <laughs> kind of match, match this stem. Oh, it is the most matchy. Ooh, and it's the most ridiculous. I'm gonna give it the first shot. You gotta have a process. <laughs> All right, well, I gotta go run an errand. Maybe I'll work on this morning and get back. Definitely gotta do that headset, not looking forward to it. Not looking forward to it. I got a cheesy bearing press, maybe I'll try and use that. I've been wanting to make a cheesy video on that forever. Don't really wanna hammer a nice light alloy headset into a frame. Also got to measure this to make sure the headset's GIS or ISO. Make sure this is GIS or ISO. Because <laughs> that can be a trick too. Okay, if this is part one and part two doesn't start for a minute, thanks for watching.